I've got one for you here now. Do you know the Quality Street Gang, the notorious group of blokes that apparently plagued the streets and boozers of Manchester for 40 years? Yeah, well apparently, they may never have existed. I'm going to need your individual attention on this, and if there's anything you don't agree with me on, please don't come round to my house and try to batter me. Let's start at the beginning, with an advert on the telly for some chocolates back in the mid-60s. Quality Street introduced a zany set of characters to our TV sets, The Gang, featuring a diverse lineup of borderline offensive stereotypes, the likes of which you've probably not seen today. With names like Tropical Sam, The Professor and Fruit Loop, the gang were all a staple of Quality Street adverts for a fair few years, and this is apparently where the notorious Manchester gang got their name. In his book, Stalker, The Search for the Truth, Peter Taylor examined how the name came about. And yes, indeed, it came from a bloody advert. The story goes that several members of the QSG walked into a Manchester pub one evening and, looking incredibly dapper and smart, someone shouted, here's the Quality Street Gang. And the name just stuck. So, this group of blokes now have a name. A name that would come to strike fear, respect, and in some cases, adoration throughout the city for the next 40 odd years. And still to this day, carries a certain amount of gravitas for those who consider themselves connected. The problem is though, and although it's clear that the group of fellas did indeed exist and claim to be part of a pretty rowdy gang, the whole notion of the QSG was brought into doubt almost immediately. Peter Walsh in his book Gang Wars examines how, back in the 60s, 70s and 80s, certain high-ranking police officers in the Greater Manchester Police argued that the Quality Street Gang is a name given to a group of criminals who are the organisers of incidents of major crime in the city. Whereas other informed sources, including experienced detectives, contended that the QSG never existed. That, what happened is, is that a social friendship between two groups of men, most with criminal records, was exaggerated into an ongoing conspiracy, and that the whole idea of the Quality Street Gang was a fabrication. So, who is to believe? Did the Quality Street Gang actually exist as an organised entity? Or was it just a bunch of blokes in pubs dropping names so they wouldn't get into any trouble from fellow hard nuts? The simple fact of the matter is that in the entire 30 years or so in which the Quality Street Gang were watched over by the police, not one of its alleged core members were convicted of serious crimes. So, either they were clean or just really, really good at avoiding getting their collars felt. This core group of men first became notorious in Manchester in the early 60s, all hailing from poor backgrounds in areas such as Collyhurst and Ancoats. They began by selling stuff down the markets before moving into construction and property as the money started flowing in. These fellas were faces in the city's many nightclubs and bars and were known as good fighters, hard men who you wouldn't rub up the wrong way or accidentally spill your pint of mild over on the way back from the toilets. It's even speculated that Thin Lizzy's anthem, The Boys Are Back In Town, was in fact about the Quality Street Gang, as lead singer Phil Lynott's mum owned a hotel in Wally Range which was a bit of a rock and roll hub and was regularly frequented by local celebrities and QSG members. The 70s and 80s saw the gang become known as the most powerful criminal group in the history of the city, but others weren't so sure. Superintendent Bill Kerr, head of Manchester's drug squad in the early 90s, argued that there was no hierarchical structure and indeed no street gang in Manchester presently exists and have existed for the last 10 years. 
but it was clear that the police in Manchester were in fact obsessed with the notion of the QSG, whether they existed as an organised entity or not. Years of surveillance, snitches, informants and trials, all while the members of the so-called gang could go out and about in Manchester, claiming to be a part of the QSG and essentially becoming untouchable. One of the most enduring stories about the Quality Street Gang, which certainly helped cement their myth, is that the notorious gang brothers, the Craze, were chased out of Manchester by the lads when they arrived on a train at Piccadilly. Like most of the stories of them days, this one almost certainly has been embellished and added upon over the years to increase the QSG's notoriety and standing within the city. One of the most obvious examples of this is the simple fact that most cities and gangs in the UK have a similar story to tell about the Cray Twins, such as Birmingham's King of Clubs, Eddie Fertrell, who once told them to piss off. In his autobiography, The Boys Are Back In Town, notorious QSG member Jimmy The Wee Donnelly explained how the popular version of events is cobblers and in fact, the Cray Twins were quite friendly and it was a police who confronted the twins and told them to behave themselves before they left Manchester peacefully the next day. So the myth of the Cray Twins is rubbish, but what about the myth of the Quality Street Gang themselves? Were they organised with their criminal activities? Did they have a leader? Were they the city's most powerful group of men ever? In truth, accounts and stories are all over the place. It would be convenient for those involved in the gang to claim that they were indeed organised and powerful. Whereas, it would be also convenient for the police to claim otherwise. Sly digs in a war they were almost certainly losing. The simple fact of the matter is it was all conjecture and with everyone's waning years it's unlikely that we'll ever truly know the truth of it all. Did the QSG exist? I'm going to say yes because, as Tony Wilson famously said, when you have to choose between the truth and legend, choose legend. <laughs>